the Paracave Podcast, proudly brought to you by major sponsor Jack's Pale Ale, exclusively available at Paramount Leash Club, Shannon Cooney from Glenmore Park Realty, BTZD Clothing, and the official media partner of the Paracave Podcast, the Parramatta Times. Welcome to another episode of the Paracave Podcast. And now over to your host, Troy Warner, broadcasting live from the world-famous Paracave. And yes, hello and welcome back to another episode of the Paracave Podcast. Troy Warner here, and this is the Q&A podcast that comes out each and every week. And I put out a post on Instagram and Facebook the other night, I think it was Sunday night, uh, to get in your questions about the NRL, the Parramatta Eels, or even the anything NRL, rugby league, uh, whichever, because uh, I love answering your questions from the fans, as that what that's what I love doing this podcast about for the fans, and I love talking rugby league. So let's get into it, and look, let's head over to the Instagram page first, and look, the first question comes through. The line through a pod. Okay, thank you very much for following me. And uh, look, you've got a great podcast there. So listeners, check out the line through pod. And their question is, what is the best non-related Parramatta-specific rugby league podcast out there? Now, look, this is a very interesting question as it is coming from a podcast. Uh, the line through pod, as I mentioned before, is very interesting. There is a couple of Parramatta fans on there and a Tigers fan, but they cover the whole of the rugby league. And look, it is very interesting. So please give them a follow. Um, very interesting. Give them a listen as well. They go through the rounds of rugby league. They give their tips in a very unusual way of the rounds that happen each week. Uh, a very funny, in in creative way that they do their tips. So have a listen to them. Um, other non Parramatta specific rugby league podcasts. Well, there's many. You've got the point of difference. Rugby League podcast, uh, Dave Carter, who's over there in New Zealand, uh, does many a great interviews with New Zealand Rugby League legends and also Australian Rugby League legends as well. Uh, so check that one out as well. Um, the Ruck Infringement podcast, I've been lucky enough to be a guest on that podcast a couple of times, um, again, they cover the whole of a rugby league, the NRL, um, not just one team base p- specific. Uh, and look, you've also got a good friend of the show, Andy Raymond, and his podcast, Andy Raymond Unfiltered, which I enjoy listening to the Legend series, where Andy, a great interviewer himself, listens uh sorry interviews legends of rugby league uh old new in between as well uh and get some really good stories out there i think the most recent one is steve edge three-time Parramatta premiership winning captain also a premiership winning captain at the St George Dragons as well so in total a five time premiership winning player of rugby league so check that one out as well and of course you have your uh, buy around podcast as well with James Graham from time to time I do listen to the interview based uh, podcast that he brings out as well as I'm interested in some of the guests that he has as well um, when it comes to when it comes to podcasts like his and Andy Raymond's, I probably like to listen to the interviews because uh, I like to listen to legends of rugby league talk about their stories. Uh, look, also another great one for mind and coaching, I guess you could call it, is uh, the Get the Edge podcast with Hayden Knowles. Um, 
former Parramatta Eels head performance trainer, is currently at the Sydney Roosters as well, has worked at Penrith Panthers and New South Wales as well, a uh, good friend of this show, and he talks to a whole range of people now. He is a rugby league person, but he talks to a whole range of person. I think one of his episodes that he has done previously is with Brian Gorgian, the Australian Boomers coach, I think it is, so competing over there in, in the Olympics. So um, he gets a whole range of people, some boxing people as well, rugby league people um, as well on his podcast. So check those ones out, give them all a follow, give them a listen, and let me know what you think about that one. Uh, look, we've got uh, Chris Ricketts82 on Instagram. Who is the best-looking current Parramatta Eels first grader based on my expert opinion? Wow. My expert opinion and best-looking. Well, look, that's a, I guess you could say, a difficult question, I guess. Um, I don't think I've ever potentially looked at the players in that sort of a view, that sort of an eye, um, and when it comes to best looking. Um, look, I guess the uh, females, and hey, potentially even a few males as well, they might like Dylan Brown. I think he's pretty popular in the looks department. Um, look, if I was to go off who I would like to have a body off, I guess you could say Ryan Madison. I mean, he's got a fair rig on him, and he is not too shy to get that out in the sun and show that off. I guess he's got massive arms on him, massive biceps on him, I guess. Uh, so, yeah, if I, if I could have a, a rugby league player's body, I'd probably go for Ryan Madison uh, and his rig. That's pretty well done. A lot of training in that one, that is for sure. So, Chris, thank you very much for that question. Let me know who you think is the best-looking Parramatta Eels first grader. Uh, the next one comes from Ricks underscore Jersey underscore Bonanza underscore sequel. What do you think about the rumours that Para will go hard for Little Pappy in 2026? Now, Little Pappy, of course, is Ryan Pappenhausen, the Melbourne Storm fullback, and he is off contract at... Uh, the end of 2025. Now, he is able to talk to clubs, including his current club, the Melbourne Storm, after November 1, I think it is. So, um, Parramatta, are they in the market for little puppy, Ryan Pappenhausen, as a fullback in 2026, two years' time? Um, I think that would be a good purchase. We need a little bit of speed in the back line of the Parramatta Eels. Uh, more than likely, he would play fullback, uh, which would probably mean a move for Clint Gutherson. And we have heard in the past Gutho say that he would move anywhere in the team to accommodate uh, players. Um, so that is just the type of person that Clint Gutherson is. More than likely, that would probably mean a move to the centre position, I guess, for Gutho, um, as he is getting older, and he has obviously had well-publicised knee injuries in the past, but he has also come out and said before Blaise Talangi left the club, or is leaving the club at the end of the year, he did say that he would move positions to accommodate him and if he wanted to play fullback he would move positions uh, just to accommodate him and he and whatever is best for the team so i think you will find that ryan pappenhausen would sign as a fullback definitely that's what he plays at the melbourne storm and look i i I don't know, it's a difficult one. I like the fact that there is rumours out there that they are chasing him and will go hard. Uh, I believe that he is a local junior. Uh, his family does live in the area 
of Parramatta uh, in the Hills District, I think it is. Um, so, look, it could make sense that he could come home, but I think he will try and stay at the Melbourne Storm. Now, that offers up a interesting uh, situation as well. Sua Falongo, the young gun fullback who hasn't played that many games but has filled in sensationally for Ryan Pappenhausen when he's been out injured, uh, especially in the 2023 season and the 2024 season. Um, he, he ha- I believe, has a clause in his contract that if Ryan Pappenhausen re-signs with the Melbourne Storm, he can he has a get out clause that he can negotiate with other clubs and get a release from the storm i think he signed for a 5 year deal i think it was so um he would want to play fullback for i guess you could say those 5 years so uh it'll be interesting to see what ryan pappenhausen does it'll be interesting to see how this season goes anyway um I guess for Melbourne, they are one of the front runners in this competition. If he, if the Melbourne Storm win a competition down there, and he is a part of it, who knows? Uh, that may sway in the decision of him to leave. He's already won a competition with Melbourne in 2020. He was a Clive Churchill medalist, um, so perhaps he may make the move. Jason Riles is the head coach of the Parramatta Eels in 2025 and beyond. Uh, I guess he has a little bit of a relationship with Jason uh, from his time at the Melbourne Storm. So I guess that may be another factor working in favour of the Parramatta Eels. The next question comes from... Para Eels underscore foreign correspondent. Uh, now, this must mean that he's a Parramatta Eels fan over the other side of the world. I'm assuming by the by this question, he is he or she uh, is in the UK because their question is. Will you fly over to the UK for the 2026 World Club Challenge when Parramatta play Leeds in the Brad Arthur Bowl? I would love to catch up with you for a beer at Headingley to celebrate Parramatta's 2025 Grand Final Triumph. Look, uh, Parramatta Eels underscore for a correspondent. Thank you very much for your question, and I am assuming that you are over in the UK in England so look will I fly over to the UK for the 2026 World Club Challenge mate I would love to fly over there um, because that would mean that Parramatta are premiers in 2025 in the NRL Uh, and as you mentioned there playing Leeds who they would have to win the competition who are currently uh, coached by Brad Arthur, former Parramatta Eels coach over there in the Super League. Uh, not too sure. I don't cover the Super League too much, so I'm not too sure uh, how long Brad's stint at Leeds is. So I know it's only a short-term stint. You One could imagine that he would go around next year to move across the other side of the world is a pretty big move just for a couple of months a few months anyway so i would assume that he would be coaching next year leads in the super league so look if they are uh good good enough to win the super league well then they will play the nrl premiers obviously in the world club challenge now will that be the 2026 world club challenge who knows but uh look regardless if if Parramatta do win the 2025 Grand Final, uh, regardless of who they're playing, I would love to go over to the UK. I've never been over to the UK. Um, it is just a matter. It is just a matter of finances um, and getting myself over there uh, and getting time off and getting myself over there. But look. I really appreciate your question and I thank you for the offer of 
catching up and having a beer at Headingley, one of the historic grounds at uh, in England and for rugby league. Uh, and look, you never know. You never know. Never say never. You never know what could happen in a couple of years' time. Uh, who knows? I may be on that plane flying over to England for that. Look, Parramatta's got to win the NRL Grand Final first. Um, that, that would help, definitely. And uh, you never know. Finance, if I could get a sponsor who would, would sponsor me to go over there. Look, the difficult thing about the... World Club Challenge is also now that the Rugby League plays in Vegas at the start of the year, it is very interesting how the NRL would pick the uh, sides that will play there um, over there. So, uh, I mean, they've done it this year with Penrith. Uh, They will play in 2025 over in Vegas. Uh, and they are one of the front runners to win the 2024 competition. So I guess they would have a trial game. Uh, I'm not too sure where the World Club Challenge is this year. It, I think it may be in Australia next year, 2025, if you're saying it's 2026 over there in England. So I'm assuming it'll be 2025, it'll be in Australia. Um, so that may not be so much of a drama, but could you imagine uh, the scheduling for 2026 if Parramatta were to play in Las Vegas round one? Uh, if they did win the competition in 2025, they would be playing in that World Club Challenge. Could you imagine that schedule there? How would they schedule that? Would you play over in England and then fly over to vegas for round one um it would be pretty that that would be a pretty hectic start to the year for for any team to do that so i suppose it does get a little bit tricky in terms of the for the nrl in terms of picking a team for the las vegas games uh, 20, uh, Parramatta have not played over there in Las Vegas yet and they will play in this five year deal apparently just when it will be there was a few rumours going around that it would be next year but that wasn't to be so look stay tuned what will happen there but look I would love to fly over uh, it's just a matter of uh, getting a sponsor to maybe sponsor me to get over there uh, for that. And, look, Paramount has got to win the competition first. Um, but I would definitely love to, if you're ever in Australia and at Combank Stadium uh, one time, let me know. We'll catch up and we'll have a beer anyway and we'll talk Parramatta anyway. Uh, but I would much rather prefer talking about a 2025 grand final triumph so thank you very much for sending through the question and for supporting the podcast i really appreciate that one this next question from brody underscore hansen underscore is on instagram is a very interesting one uh and it could cause a little bit of dramas i reckon but look see how you go look see how you go for uh, yourselves after you hear this but Brody has gone for a start cut bench um, question and it involves three players at the Parramatta Eels and it is Mitchell Moses, Clint Gutherson and Dylan Brown so start cut or bench look this is a very difficult one, I guess, because I love all those players and they are very crucial to the success of the Parramatta Eels in the NRL. Uh, we've seen Mitchell Moses win a State of Origin series this season, 2024. He was man of the match in Game 2 and played a starring part in Game 3, the decider up at Suncorp Stadium. Dylan Brown, a New Zealand international. We have seen glimpses of him 
uh, at both that level and at club level as well. 2022 was a good year for Dylan. Uh, Clint Gutherson, look, you know what you're going to get from him. Never die attitude, always competitive, um, always wants to win. So in that, with that saying, look, this is a very hard one. In with that saying, uh, I would... I would start Mitchell Moses, and the reason I say that, I would start him to get you off to that good start, um, to get, to have you in that team and get you off to that good start. Uh, we, we know his running game. He can score tries from his running game. His kicking game is very important, again, to the success of a rugby league team. Um, and look, I think I would start Mitchell Moses. Uh, look, uh, I think, I think I would probably, oh, Dylan Brown or Clint Gutherson bench. I think I would go Clint Gutherson, uh, bench as as much as I it pains me to say that means that Dylan Brown would be cut uh, because I like both of these players and look I think I would I would bench Clint Gutherson and the reason I would do that is because I think the potential lead in a game that Mitchell Moses could get you. I think Clint Gutherson could be a player that could either uh, help Mitchell Moses when he comes onto the field or also he could defend a a lead as well. That's not to say that Dylan Brown is not a good defender. He's he's one of the best defenders, one of the best 5'8 defenders in the game. So... Um, that that's why that makes it so tough and so difficult. You could potentially have it could potentially be an age thing as well. You could put Dylan Brown and Mitchell Moses. They could be uh, lethal together. Uh, but yeah, probably just that reason. Mitchell Moses could get you off to that good start, and uh, Clint Gutherson could protect that and even chip in to increase that. Dylan Brown, uh, a very unfortunate one there. So that is a hard question. Um, I'd love all three of them in the team, which they are at the moment. Um, let me know your thoughts, Brody, uh, and also uh, listeners. Let me know your thoughts about what you would do on that start cut bench. Um, go to the Q and A podcast post that I posted up, the latest one, with that question and uh, just reply back and let me know your thoughts and your comments as to what you would do on that. But thank you very much, Brody, for sending through that question. I really appreciate it. The next question comes from a very good young uh, women in league uh, player also does some great things in terms of interviewing players as well. Um, her name is Nicola Weber, but she goes under the in- in Instagram page ytg dot with Nick. So give that one a follow if you are into your NRLW. She is a Parramatta fan as well, but um, a major uh, lover of Women's Rugby League, a great supporter of Women's Rugby League, also uh, not just at NRLW level, but also at local level as well. I know, uh, I, th- I think she plays for the Camden, uh, uh, sorry, the Campbelltown City Kangaroos, the same team that Eric Growth Senior, uh, Eric Growth Senior, and Eric Growth Junior co-coach, um, and she is a great supporter of that team as well. And she does little interviews with these players as well. Look, any of the NRLW players um, love seeing Nicola. Uh, I've seen it firsthand at games as well. 
uh, just the interaction she has with these NRLW players. So uh, give her a follow on Instagram for some great NRLW content, that's for sure. Now, her question, I, I sort of have answered this one in the NRL game review podcast that is already out there so if you haven't already heard that one check it out it is the game review podcast the eels and the warriors in round 22 women in league round but at the end of that podcast i have also done a review on the eels versus sharks game in the nrlw round number two so i sort of have already answered this question as well but i'm happy to go through it here as well because some people may not have heard that uh podcast yet so um if there are any nrl nrlw questions now just first things first they're happy to answer any nrlw questions as best I can at all. So if you ever want to ask a question, don't be shy. Please send that one through on these sort of podcasts. Um, and the Eels girls put up a good fight on the weekend and looked very competitive in going down by just two points. I thought Kennedy Cherrington was outstanding, scoring another try, 132 run metres, 42 tackles, 17 hit-ups, four tackle breaks. Thoughts on Kennedy's early season form look that's the first part of the question so i'll answer that one kennedy's uh early season form two games uh win against the broncos a small loss against the sharks uh from what i've seen uh very good uh very determined to win um I think I saw in the Sharks game there was one point there where she did three, possibly four tackles in one set. She was just followed the play, made the tackle, and then was there at marker as well. So, look, um, very competitive player. Scored two tries as well this season. Uh, potentially that could be to make up for last season. I think injured last season and suspended as well, I think. Um, throughout last season so trying to make up for lost time I guess Um, maybe also a a little bit of a disappointment not making the New South Wales state of origin side as well but early season form from Kennedy is definitely through the roof and she's going great guns as well and is one of the leaders in this Parramatta Eels NRLW side that is for sure the second sort of part of the question was we also have a young rookie Rory Owen scored her second try in just the second game had 181 run meters 67 post contact meters three tackle breaks one line break I think if Rory continues this form over the season she very well could be in the running for the NRLW rookie of the year thoughts uh so yeah absolutely totally 100 percent agree on that one uh great game from excuse me from rory owen yesterday in the game against the sharks 100 181 run meters that is unbelievable uh i guess you uh, look completely different games but you sometimes don't see any of the men's do any of the men do 181 run run meters but um that is phenomenal uh one line break and one try as well two tries in two games so definitely a a rookie that is for sure two games two tries um and someone who has been identified and has made her NRLW debut last week and has carried that form on through to this week. And as you said there, also, if if she continues that form throughout this NRLW season, uh, definitely right up there for contention for NRLW Rookie of the Year, that is for sure. Uh, the third part of the question was also we saw some great footy in the NRLW for women in league round. Thoughts on the quality of the NRLW so far this season. Now, 
Uh, I will be honest, I've only seen a couple of games over this weekend, round number two. Um, I did watch the opening game of the season, the Roosters versus the Knights, the defending premiers. Uh, I did watch the three State of Origin games that were played, uh, the women's State of Origin that was played a few months ago now, a couple of months ago now. Um, but the NRLW, look, it's only growing and growing and growing, and I, I think the quality of that competition is really good to watch. Um, we do see some high scores in that game, uh, but we watch enjoyable games, I think, and look, the effort that these women put into their games uh, there is some great talent out there. They they can score some unbelievable tries. Um, one that comes to mind that just happened over the weekend was Jamie Chapman's try uh, for the Gold Coast Titans, uh, who sit on top of the NRLW ladder. Um, that was another length of the field job from a kick return. Um, just tries like that. Um, the intercept try from Jess Sergis. Um, there was uh, also... And just the one, one of the other tries from... I think it was Monique Donovan for the Parramatta Eels. It was just an offload um, sort of try from one side of the field... Uh, to the other so um, that that was a great try as well so look I think the quality is really good there are some superstars in the NRLW and I will continue definitely to be talking about it uh, on the podcast and also I will be watching as much as I can over the weekends as well Uh, I do keep up with it on the social media side of things uh, and also enjoy your content as well Nick so keep that up as well and listeners as I said if you're into your NRLW uh, and you want to see a passionate young fan doing her craft then follow YTG ytg dot with nick on instagram that is for sure and you'll see some great stuff there look i'm going to flick over to the facebook page as well uh, because some questions have uh, flowed over to that page the paracade podcast on facebook and this question comes from Dave Johnston. Uh, now, good friend Dave Johnston, um, former ball boy for the Parramatta Eels way back when. Um, his father, Ian Johnston, was the Parramatta Eels' first ever Australian international. So a pretty good honour there, that is for sure. Uh, And his question is, surely the club keeps RCG. He has led from the front in the pack and deserves an upgraded contract. Look, a little bit of talk about RCG uh, in the news last week about himself, Ryan Madison, Sean Lane and Mike Acevo as well being told that they can look for other clubs if need be. They are free to negotiate with other clubs. Uh, RCG is a little bit of an interesting one for me Um, he has led from the front he probably has had a better season than uh, he he has a better he has had a better season than Junior Paolo that is for sure and I guess it's probably showing a little bit more now that Junior is out injured Uh, RCG definitely has to be the leader of the pack that is for sure one game he played against the Gold Coast Titans up there at the Gold Coast he was unbelievable Um, I can't remember offhand how many run meters he did in that game but there was one uh, line dropout return and it was a long line dropout from the Gold Coast not your short ones that you see these days and basically he got the ball and just ran it hard it was like it was off the back fence so um i 
that has probably been his best game all season. Uh, but he does put in some consistent efforts as well. One thing that does concern me was a media conference that he had uh, a few weeks ago, I think it was now, when Jason Riles was appointed as coach. Um, I just didn't really like the way that he answered a question. And, hey, that could be just RCG being the relaxed person that he is, I guess. But he basically sort of went across the lines of, uh, look, if he wants me, he wants me. If he doesn't, he doesn't. I'll find another club. Um, look, that that sort of probably disappointed me a little bit. But hey, that could be RCG uh, in his relate re- relaxed relaxed state um, when talking to the media, and probably talking it the way it is as well he did say also he knows that it is a business as well um so he would just have to wait and see what what uh jason's thoughts are but uh in terms of an upgraded contract i don't know about an upgraded contract i think he is on pretty reasonable money at the moment uh and I think this is the uh, this is this is the last year of Penrith play, paying for his contract. I could be believing that, or it could be it could have been last year. But I do believe that he is on a pretty good contract as it is. Um, and look, if he was to get an upgraded contract, I think he would have to be playing State of Origin consistently to get an upgraded contract. Uh, he is a State of Origin player. He has played that in the past whilst at Parramatta, I think 2022 most recently, uh, off memory. Uh, and look, I, I think he's on pretty good money as it is, so um, I'm not too sure about an upgraded contract, but um, he would definitely find another club somewhere else in the NRL, that is for sure, rather than going to the English Super League, uh, I do believe. But uh, RCG, look, he has his moments. He definitely has his moments. I, I would I would like to see more consistency from him. Uh, look, I wouldn't want to stand in front of him and try and tackle him, that is for sure, but he is the leader of the pack, um, and... Uh, he is one of my favourites, but I just think that I just think need to see more consistency from him. Um, consistently getting those run meters up. Uh, he's a tackling machine. He's not afraid of that. Um, and as you said, he is the leader of the pack. Definitely at the moment with Junior Paolo out. Look, that is all the questions that came through. So thank you very much for sending those through, everybody. I really, really appreciate it. I've enjoyed talking about them. I hope you have liked my opinions about those ones. Uh, and look, stay tuned for Sunday night on Instagram. I will post a, another Q&A post as well uh, next week for round 23. So keep that one in mind. If you want to send through some questions, then by all means, please do. And I will bring out a, another Q&A podcast. So this will be available on Apple and Spotify and any other quality podcast platforms thank you very much for listening please give the podcast a follow on instagram facebook uh also apple spotify subscribe to those ones as well shout out to um uh, there's a listener uh, it could be many listeners i don't know but the town of warwick in queensland uh, i've noticed lately that they have been listening to a lot of episodes on the podcast so i really appreciate the support there listening to the podcast so if it's one listener thank you very much if it's a whole town of warwick in queensland thank you very much for listening to the podcast that's enough for me today stay tuned for the tipping podcast that is probably going to be coming out next there'll be a game day preview podcast for the eels and panthers as well so stay tuned for that one thank you very much for listening and go para hello para cave podcast listeners my name is shannon cooney from glenmore park realty 
and long-term sponsor of the Paracave podcast. If you're looking to sell your property or buy, or just curious to know what your property is worth in today's market, give me a call today on 0421 588 445. for listening to another episode of the Paracade Podcast. See you next time.